You know what Simone does to our taste level? She elevates it. We're over here drinking water every other episode, but this <laughs> episode, Simone shows up and we, we break out the bubbly. Got that bubbly. bubbly. <laughs> we are entering into a sermon series about relationships at the church and also here on the podcast. And so with that being said, one thing that I would love to know from the both of you guys is three adjectives that would describe yourself at 19. Also, wait, 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 wait. How old is Simone? (laughs) (laughs) I'm 19. (laughs) Perfect. All right. Also, we would love to know from you three adjectives when you were 19. So, uh, elders first. Single. <laughs> I'm stealing that. Um, <laughs> you go with that one. <laughs> Relatable. Uh, I'm sure. Not much has really changed. I'm going to say immature. <laughs> and, no, no. <laughs> and um, were were you were you cute at 19? <laughs> <laughs> it probably depends on your definition of that word for sure. Uh, I'm not going to go there. Ooh. Available. <laughs> Available. Okay. Simone? I thought it was like elders. He, 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 <laughs> he doesn't play by his own shade, rules. Shade so room. All right. All right. I'll go. I'll go, go. Um, okay. Uh, at 19. Oh, my goodness. I don't want to pick the same things as you. But they, they fit, though, right? Oh, all of those things <laughs> fit. 19. I think that I was overconfident. Um, excited to be alive. That's like six. And then I will, I'll say immature for sure. Super immature. I would say humorous. (laughs) She's talking in the past tense. (laughs) So yesterday I was humorous. I just laughed. A second ago. <laughs> and she laughs at herself. That's the best part. I'm humorous and she laughs. Um, humorous, excited. <laughs> I think I heard that before. I'm She's, honestly just making stuff up. Uh, uh, man. Kind. Kind. Mm. Artie, pick <laughs> one of those things and explain. So one of the things you said was overconfident. Oh, Would yeah. you say that was in relationships or like... Specific, like in like dating, I think with uh, like asking girls out on dates, or are you just talking about in life of maybe just this kind of like invincible mindset of a nineteen year old in, in life? Yeah, so I think both for sure in life, but then also in relationships. Now, don't get me wrong, I wasn't like walking around thinking that everybody wanted to date me, but feeling pretty confident that we could make something happen. We can make something. We can, <laughs> we can, come we can some work something out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Rob, immature. Explain. Oh, I mean, being a guy, 19, you're just immature. Everything you do. Um, like I said, probably not much has changed. If you ask my wife, she'd probably still tell you I'm pretty immature. Um, and so just mindset. Were you immature in relationships? Yeah, I didn't date a ton. So Simone said what? She was... Humorous, humorous kind, and excited. And excited. Okay. So which one do we want to know about? Which one? <laughs> I think excited. I knew yeah. you were going to say <laughs> that. <laughs> um, I feel like excited actually is a good word because like, I like that I'm young and that I don't really... like. I have a lot to look forward to, I guess you can say. So I'm excited for that. We would love to know your three... And if you would like to explain any of them, let us know. But then now we do want to talk about something as it relates to relationships. We want to talk about worst dates. So whether you've gone on a bad date or you want to imagine your worst date, we would love to hear from you guys and from you guys. Like I said, I did not date a ton, so it wasn't, I really don't have a date in my mind that's like, that was a bad date. Uh, All probably. of Rob's dates were good. <laughs> <laughs> All two. Um, <laughs> but uh, probably if I was to imagine, it'd be like one of those just nightmare things where everything goes wrong. Like maybe you go to dinner and you just spill food down y- yourself and you got stains now on your shirt or you don't realize you got something stuck in your teeth. And Would you prefer to have it spilled on you or spilled on your date? But you're the cause of it. Oh, on you. myself. 
I must spill on it on you. That's even worse. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's like takes it to wondering. another level. Like, yeah, yeah. hey, let me spill this on you. So that would probably that or like probably if I, you know, you're driving and you got in a car accident and it was your fault mm-hmm. and you had a date in the car, that would be pretty brutal. Mm. I feel like personally those things wouldn't make it a bad date for me. I feel like a date could be good, but if the date is silent and there's like no laughter or conversation, that's the worst date. Like that, I'm not going back. So that so if I crash the car and I just laugh, <laughs> yeah, we can okay. roll ten <laughs> times. We can like a, a head-on collision, <laughs> but we had a good time. We're good. We're good. <laughs> We're good. We walked away. Yeah. So that was kind of like uh, a worst date that I had. Uh, I believe it was ten. I was in tenth grade, and uh, I took a girl out to the movies, and she had some expectations for the date. Uh, and I was just nervous. I was just excited to be going out with this particular person. And so we went to the movies. I thought we had a good time. I think I, I don't, I don't know, maybe I bought her ice cream. We went to the movies. It was good. And then literally at the end of the date, like the next day, she was like, I don't think this is going to work. And I said, why don't you think this is going to work? And she thought that I should have kissed her on the first date. Um, and I didn't because I was just, it's not that I wouldn't, but I was just so scared, intimidated, um, going out with this particular person. And so it did. He, he wasn't 19 at that point. He wasn't I was 19. <laughs> the 10th grade. Where, 10th how old grade. are you in 10th grade? You You're better not, not have 19. been 19. <laughs> I would be concerned. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, um, 16. 16. So that isn't like, I don't know, like something like that, a car accident or spilling food. But I feel like it was a bad date because I didn't kiss her and we didn't. We didn't continue any more dates. Just a public service announcement. You don't have to kiss on the first date. Unless she dumps you. <laughs> <laughs> and then you should go. <laughs> That's not going to make it. I got to agree with Simone. <laughs> I think uh, just that awkward silence. Yeah. Like if there is no conversation. If it's oh, just I thought you like meant with kissing. <laughs> yeah, I thought he was going to go into that. I was <laughs> like, we, we get it. You said we're cutting that. That's it. Pastor, uh, <laughs> this is the pastorly <laughs> PSA. <laughs> Don't kiss on the first date. <laughs> so awkwardness. Mm-hmm. Hey, welcome to ACC. My name is Jarrell. I'm Rob. And I'm Simone. Hey, you're not Dave. Definitely not <laughs> Dave. at all. <laughs> Dave's on vacation, uh, spending some great time with his family, and so we actually asked Simone to join us today. Simone is one of our interns who does an incredible job in children's ministry, but is involved in so much more than just children's ministry, helps with students, just an incredible asset we have at the church. And so we're excited to have her join us and bring all of her wisdom into relationships to the table today. How much wisdom you got? None. <laughs> <laughs> she's got humor, so she's here. So. Cool. So we are talking about relationships, and specifically, uh, we are going to talk about deal breakers. So you are thinking about going into a relationship, or you are in a relationship, and uh, we're going to talk about some red flags. If this is happening in your relationship, it's probably a deal breaker. And so some yeah. of them will pertain uh, to being Christian in nature, but some of them are also just common sense Mm -hmm. hopefully so Simone Osley you're single what is what are things that would make you not be interested in dating somebody like what would be like nope not even gonna enter into that idea because these are the kind of those deal breakers I feel like the thing that makes me like will make me not even want to enter in the idea is like obviously like they don't have a relationship with God because like it, they could be like physically attractive and like they can be humorous, but I wouldn't want to enter into the idea like and get myself attached to them whenever that's a big aspect and why I would have to not date them. So yeah, definitely. So that's a very I don't know Christian thing. Yeah, that's yeah. You know, and and that's great, but I guess why is that so important to you? So that's so important to me. At first, it was important to me because like it's just a thing that everyone said. But, um, like looking around as I'm getting older and all my friends are entering relationships and they're like playing out, I can see like with my friends confiding in me, like with their fights and things like that, why a relationship got with God on both sides is so important because so many things could be easily fixed if they were. Um, so like fights, like, like it's always like, it, it doesn't seem as simple as like loving each other, but it's just like the kind of love that you bring. And, like, the kind of love that you bring has to come from God in order for it to work, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. 
Why do you think that's smart, Rob? Why do I think it's smart? I just think, again, if you're looking at the relationship and you're trying to have a foundation to that relationship, uh, if the relationship's foundation is Christ, that's a solid foundation, obviously, and so that's something to build on. And so if somebody doesn't have that, uh, you're not maybe approaching life the same way. You might not have even an eternal mindset. You're not maybe going to have the same standards and values as you enter into that relationship. Uh, I think a lot of times we think, oh, I can win that person yeah. to my side, but sometimes it doesn't go that way. It can go the other way, and they can pull you away from your faith. And so it's just not a great starting spot to be at different spots in beliefs. And so. So what do you guys think a uh, person is listening right now? They're in a relationship. Their partner is not um, a Christian. Uh, what do they do? Well, if it's if you guys are married, it's kind of a done deal. Well, I'm... Okay, yeah. But if you are Going married... In hard. It's so <laughs> Going in hard. Going in hard. I was like, let me back up. Done deal. <laughs> if you're not married, like, this is kind of an opportunity for you to, like, check check your heart <laughs> and see if this is really something that you want to be doing. And honestly, it's, it's probably not something God wants you to be doing. I mean, that's what I think. Was that a John Chris? Yes. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I just you totally know, forgot Chris. about his everything. <laughs> Can we still reference that man? Like <laughs> in my essay, I want to reference John Chris. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think I'd echo. Obviously, I think Scripture speaks to it. Obviously, if you are in a marriage relationship, it doesn't say to abandon that relationship. I think if you are in that relationship, I wouldn't say you just got to throw it away. But I think at the same time, it is you've got to look at how serious are you about the relationship. Is this a relationship you want to see go forward? If it is, you've got to make sure you're on the same spot. Because let's just say you do get married and you believe in Jesus, the other person doesn't, uh, and you now have children. What does that look like for your kids? You're not going to be on the same page of what you want to bring into your home, into your family on a spiritual level. And so I think it's easy sometimes to overlook it in the here and now, but I think you've got to look long term. Okay, if this is what I'm going to do, what does that look like? Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, I think if you're in a committed long term relationship, I think one thing that you can start doing and probably you already started doing is begin to pray for that person to receive Jesus and just be very intentional about having opportunities where you let your own personal faith shine instead of hiding it. Because I think that in a relationship, that's a really easy thing to do, especially if your partner doesn't believe. And then also just begin to do things where either you're bringing in someone, like if it's a guy and there's a, like a Christian guy that you know, maybe setting up things where they can hang out and they can talk about their faith and maybe that person can lead them to Jesus. Because it's probably going to be pretty hard that if you haven't led that person to Jesus yet, you're probably not going to be the person that does it. But I definitely do think there's probably going to come a time in the road where you are going to have to make that decision, whether you're going to go forward knowing that this person may never believe or uh, whether uh, you're going to you're going to stay with them or you're going to leave. And I think that you need to know, you know, especially when considering going into marriage, if this doesn't seem like a possibility, I don't necessarily think it's probably the best thing to pull that trigger and saying like, hey, you know, if I marry them, then they'll become a Christian. I feel like it's it's possible and all things are possible, but more than likely marriage not even more than likely, marriage doesn't change people. Sure. I think as I look back, even as we kind of were chatting before we started today, you were talking about deal breakers. And in my head, I was kind of going, I don't know if I, when I was younger, and obviously when Crystal and I started dating, if I necessarily had deal breakers as much as I had, these are things I want to see. Mm -hmm. These are things that I hope for in the relationship. And so obviously a common bond in Christ was one of those. Uh, but then there was definitely things I knew, you know, I was already on a path into ministry, felt that calling in my life. And so obviously I needed a a wife that was going to be very supportive of that and okay with that and that choice. And that was one of the things. And then even as Chris and I started dating even more, one of the things I'd always hoped for, you know, was the family and having kids and to be able to have, um, I really wanted my wife to be able to stay at home without kids and knowing that was going to be a sacrifice. And that was something Crystal wanted was wanting to do. And so I think even as we went along, those were things that just affirmed us. Again, it wasn't like, a deal breaker, but it was these things of just like, these are common bonds and those things that we were really unified in. 
So just like Rob, I would say I don't necessarily think that I thought to myself, this is a deal breaker, but it was something that was very important to me also. Um, and it was attraction and physical attraction. So I've got a question for you guys, especially for a Christian, should looks and attractions play into who you date? Yes, Simone, what do you think? <laughs> I think at first I thought that like um, really looking for someone who... I find attractive was kind of like conceited, but like then um, I learned somewhere that it's not. It's <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> no, I'm good. I think it's it's really important. Like, and attraction doesn't well looks. Yeah, well, attraction's not always physical, but like looks are important because you do want to be attracted to the person you are married to. But um, I think like attraction comes from a lot of different places, and someone can be can look attractive but they aren't attractive they're not attracting you on the inside <laughs> is that what you're saying like yeah like their heart's bad yeah because i find like humor and things like that attractive and like those things can make someone who i once didn't find attractive now attractive you know mm -hmm. what i mean yeah what about you no, I think. mature rob <laughs> <laughs> 19 immature <laughs> probably still the same today uh i think obviously it's you're lying mm -hmm. if you don't say that physical. I mean, that's a lot of times what will even start the possibility of a relationship. You see somebody, there's that physical attraction. I mean, even scripture speaks about it. I mean, it was, sometimes it describes somebody as being beautiful or maybe not quite so beautiful. Or, you know, it talks about he was well built or handsome. And so I think God definitely has, you know, given us a physical features. And so that's a part of who we are. And so I was like, people are probably different people can be attracted to different things. Um, and so I think that's obviously a part of it, but obviously you hope that it, the relationship's not all about just the physical attraction. And like Simone said, there's those elements that as you get to know the person, maybe you realize, oh, they're a funny person. They really make me laugh. And I love that quality about them that that kind of just increases the attraction. It's like, yeah, there's the initial, but now these other things, as I learn who the person is, adds to that attraction and it kind of just combined and makes them even more appealing. Yeah, for sure. I think one of the things that I just want to echo in this, um, if attraction is the only thing, then like don't plan on having a long relationship mm -hmm. sure. um, because everybody gets old at some point in time, unless you Botox. Mm -hmm. um, You've been Botoxing? I've been Botoxing. Really? <laughs> I don't need Botox, Rob. Um, <laughs> I found the fountain of youth. I, I am the fountain. <laughs> um, yeah, like if you're, if you are, if your self worth, if your self value is rooted in your, in your looks, um, or even in your humor, or even in, you know, your wisdom, if that's what you think makes you attractive, at some point in time, um, that person's going to see your significant other. They're going to see another side of you. And I think, unfortunately, for those people that base it solely on attraction, uh, those relationships won't last very long. And so I think you have to internally look in your heart and say, yes, this is something that's important to me, but um, it can't take the cake. Yeah. It can't be everything. Yeah. So don't feel guilty um, if you're like, uh, if you like a certain type of person, um, but don't let that rule you. Yeah. That can't be all the relationships built on. Definitely. So a deal breaker for me is definitely, it's not a probably, it's a definitely, if they're not funny, we we can't be together. Because <laughs> that's something, we were just talking about attraction, and that's something I find unattractive. <laughs> all right, so if you're 19 to 22, if you're not <laughs> Why'd funny. Why'd you set my no, range for me? If you're 19 to 22 and you're not funny, <laughs> and you gotta do not reach and out you to someone. And you got to know Jesus. And you have yeah, to know Jesus. Jesus. That that bar is pretty low, but believe me. Wait, I love how he gave me 19 to 22. Like, that's all I can date, Jerome. <laughs> like, <laughs> my number's going to appear on the bottom of the screen. <laughs> Why is that my set? <laughs> that's all you get, funny in Jesus. <laughs> so how has humor um, played a role in your relationship, Rob, with Crystal? I would say sometimes I think it can be a negative. Uh, I'm one that I... I don't like seeing somebody unhappy. 
or sad or mad or upset. And when I, in our relationship, when that happens, I try to resort to humor and mm-hmm. especially sarcasm to make Crystal smile. But I would try and it probably just made it worse because it's not, you know, it, she probably wanted to be more of a serious mm-hmm. conversation, and I'm kind of joking. Uh, but at the same time, humor, if just in our family, even today with our kids, if you can't handle jokes and, you know, maybe the joke being about you a little bit, uh, it goes around. Um, they'll probably He's in my talking family, about roasting. Mm-hmm. Roasting. <laughs> That's and, different. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, I didn't say that. But it's funny. It's funny, <laughs> especially when it's not you getting roasted. It's really funny. Something that's important to me, I feel like, is <laughs> that, like, we laugh together. Like, obviously it is kind of fun sometimes to like make jokes about each other, but like laughing together just creates something like, even in the friendships that I have, like the friendships that I have are really built on the way we are able to laugh together. And that's just really important. I got a question for you. Yep. Um, you and Josie, Mm -hmm. did you guys really just start in a dating relationship or was there a friendship there before that happened? So, uh, when Josie and I first met in college, we, met on the first day during registration and it was so funny um, because when I first saw her I thought man she is a beautiful person and I heard her speak and she had just spent almost a year and a half maybe two years in New York careful what you're about to say and she was very she had the thickest New York accent in in a small rural town of Missouri and so as soon as she opened up her mouth, it was kind of like Cardi B. And it was what? like, I can't handle that. That's crazy. I love you, babe. It wasn't a deal breaker, though. Uh, so uh, we were actually, we argued a, a ton, like just flat out argued about the Bible, argued about how you, sh- the proper way of Christian living. I mean, we, we argued about so many different things. Uh, and so I legitimately thought we would probably never end up together because we just spent too much arguing. So I would say that was the friendship time of two to three months. Okay. Uh, and then the next month we got engaged. <laughs> <laughs> Jarrell's a man to waste no time. Yes, yes, yes. Even That's at 19. How old sure. were you guys when you got married? 19. Like I was saying. So this was something that Josie and I talked about that I think could be helpful for you guys if you talk about it before you start dating. Not everybody feels like this, but I feel like dating for fun can result in a lot of broken hearts and unneeded stress in your life and drama. And so when we kind of entered into a relationship, we entered into a relationship with, if I could see myself marrying you, that's the only way we're going to actually enter into this relationship. We're not just going to date for fun and then have a bunch of breakup stories for the end. Um, And so we kind of had that mindset. So we talked about a few things uh, even before we started dating um, that kind of went along with that. And so one of the things that I always wanted uh, when I started having a family was to have a lot of kids. And that was something that um, What's a lot? I think we initially talked about like six, at least six kids. Um, but I will say, man, have <laughs> your first kid before you start <laughs> throwing out throwing out numbers. <laughs> so but anyways, so you're one shy. Yes, we're one shy, and we shall forever remain one shy. <laughs> um, so, anyways, that was something that uh, I think. Not, I'm not saying that you have to do it, but it would be really good if you're on the same page, um, that you guys are similarly going to the same places. Like I knew that I wanted to work in ministry. Um, and so if she wanted me to be a rich person, she probably shouldn't have sure. dated me. If she wanted me to be a doctor, she wanted me to be a lawyer, you know, that wasn't going to work. Uh, so kind of talking through your goals and what you're looking to accomplish in life is really important so that, you know, you're not going to be on two separate pages when later on in life and you're like, all these things that I wanted, I haven't received. Uh, If you don't talk about those things, uh, those can be missed expectations. So I knew Crystal uh, before we started dating. She actually dated one of my friends in high school, and then she and I started dating in college. And uh, so we we had been around each other, and so um, we actually ended up having a break at the same time uh, between some classes and with some other people, and that led to just a lot of conversations. And I think that's where it went from just being, oh, I think she's pretty, 
to, man, I, I like this person. And some of those same things you're talking about, the direction in life and the goals, I kind of talked about it earlier, was there. And that's when I was like, I could see, I could see myself marrying her even at that point. And so and then we started dating. I don't believe in dating for fun. And that's what makes it, it makes it simpler yet harder because like, um, like you could be attracted to someone and you, you could match like your personalities kind of like coincide. They follow God, but you just know, like this probably won't lead to marriage. So you just don't date, but it kind of makes it simpler. Cause like you just don't date. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Like if you guys want to, if you've dated for fun and you know, I've dated for fun, you know, before Josie. So this isn't like a condemnation on you, but, uh, I just want you to think about in all the relationships that have gone bad and how much drama and you kind of knew beforehand, this is, pr I'm probably not walking into a good relationship, but you walked into it anyways and all that drama that, that followed. And so we're not saying this because we're all knowing or anything like that. I'm, I'm just saying from personal relationships, there are past relationships that I regret heavily because I was such a selfish person and I was only looking out about the things that I wanted. And now looking back on those relationships, that man, like so much hurt, heartache and like disaster could have been avoided had I not been so selfish in just wanting the things that I wanted. Sure. All right, Rob. So wrapping up this episode on deal breakers, uh, what's just some good advice for people that are seeking to be in a relationship and maybe not currently, um, and making sure that you're not just jumping into your first relationship. What's some good advice for them? Well, I think what we talked about from the get go is that foundation, the starting block of being united in Christ and having the same beliefs, I think is vital. Um, and then just knowing why, why are you dating? If it's, if you've got no seriousness, it's like you're saying, if it's not with that thought of, could I see myself marrying this person? You know, is there really much point in that? Um, or are you just setting yourself up maybe for some hurt or hurting somebody else? And so I just make sure you're on the same page with the person, that uh, the goals are the same and the direction that the relationship's going. For sure. If you got a job, they should have a job. <laughs> <laughs> Facts. <laughs> if, if education is important to you, education should be important to them. If you want to farm, they need to want to farm. If you want alpacas, 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 if you want alpacas, that should have been a deal breaker. They need to want alpacas. Yes. All right. Well, hey, what are we doing this weekend, Rob? We'll be uh, continuing the series. We're actually going to look a little bit more in the relationship of uh, parents and kids and just kind of this concept of how do we live out our faith in a powerful way in front of our kids. Or maybe you're even the child in a family and you're the believer and there's parents that don't believe. How could you maybe really model uh, courageous faith even in crazy times? Very cool. Well, hey, we'd love to invite you. We have three services, 9, 30, 11, and 12, 30 p.m. And so we'd love to invite you on Sunday. Also, uh, Simone leads our preteen ministry. And so if you have a fourth or fifth grader, we would love to invite you to the 12, 30 p.m. service uh, where they can come and check that out. With that being said, thank you guys for joining us this week. And we'll see you later. You got to have a sign off. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Perfect. No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs>